Hello viewers, welcome back to Sahara TV. My name is Adiola Fayom. At this point of our show, we'd like to talk about the horrible culture of lynching in Nigeria. And to talk to us about that today is a Nigerian filmmaker who's making documentaries about the lives of ordinary children and women of Nigeria. Abimbola Ogunsanya is actually a filmmaker based in Lagos. He shoots movies, documentaries, and TV shows. He was also part of the team that shot uh, Nigerian Idol. Abimbola has made films like I'm Talented, Unique Fingers, silent screams and his most controversial documentary and also I would say his most popular documentary has been Don't Walk Away which is a documentary based on how a 12 year old boy was lynched in Lagos. Abimbola is also the founder of don'twalkaway.org. Abimbola welcome to Sahara TV. Hi, yeah, it's, it's nice having you here today. So um, in 2005, Abin Bala actually witnessed how a 12-year-old boy was lynched in Lagos. He actually talked with the boy before he was lynched. And that's actually why we're going to interview him today about the culture of lynching in Nigeria and how we all can help to stop this culture. So before we go on further in the interview, we'd like to play just a short clip of that documentary of the young boy that was lynched. Uh, stay tuned. We'll be right back. What about the baby that you want to kidnap? What about the baby that you want to kidnap? I don't think anything. It's a baby, baby. So you carry one baby for school. Yes, you do. No, 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 what about the baby that you I'm still a little bit now. 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 Um, Abimbala, just, just so you know, watching that for me is very difficult and very emotional. So I can't even imagine what it was like for you to be there that day. Uh, do, do you mind telling us what it was like to be there and not being able to help the boy? Yes, basically it was very traumatic. It wasn't what I was expecting. As, uh, it's not like visual film when you know what the next thing would be like. Coming back from what uh, so I did uh, so the whole time, you know, I, I, I asked somebody, I said, what was happening? They said a young boy was being for trying to kidnap child. And for me, I, I asked, I moved again. And the moment I got there, I told me when it was someone with the parents, I had a and at that moment, the moment I thought of the standard, what of them told me, and there's this popular Nigerian program called Ladbo. There is always shown on. So one of them that told me, that said, Ladbo is not here because they show things that are just on that particular kind of show. So the moment that gave me that access to get to the boy, and the moment I got close to him, I just speak back, just to say asking about even part of the story, what happened, what actually happened. And I just felt after the recording for after the people were just being asked. So they they allowed you to talk with the boy but then they did not allow you to help him? I mean how did that happen? I mean, just for uh, viewers, for people who have never experienced something like this, what was it I mean well, they, they, how they, exactly were you they, not able to help him? I, 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 was, I was just only allowed to just talk to him. And later, they all thought crazy about the whole thing because they felt it took too much time. They said it took too much, so much time. They really wanted to just bring into action. 
I was just one man in between one million people. It was like shooting in a war zone. There was nothing I could do at that moment. I couldn't stop anybody. I couldn't say anything because I was just saying in my heart when he started to leave that maybe one person would not come. And I could say, stop. And I did. I'll be able to make another move because I'm sure at that moment I said, stop. So I was at the point of inside. But the point took us to women. Did you make any did you make any move? Did you like try to talk them out of it or they wouldn't listen. They wouldn't listen because you know when a mob has gotten to that point, then they, they really want to take action. Especially when you are having good young people that are filled up poverty, people who have really nothing to do. And they everybody is just trying to put all their energy. At that moment, nobody was ready to listen. Nobody was thinking at that moment. Hmm. Okay, so they anybody, actually anybody, they actually yeah. accused him of trying to kidnap a baby. I mean, that's a absurd. Baby, a baby that was never ever seen. A baby that was not seen. That was, that was, that was, that was what he was accused of doing. Wow. Anyway. And at that moment, there was, there, was, there, was, there, was, there, was, there was really nothing that I could do. Even if you look at the footage. If you look at the footage very well, there was even one other guy that came in, the threat set in, and it was, it was just it was, it, 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 it was a thing because at the end of the day, when the boy was born, that was the first time I actually saw him die and the end of a life. Hmm. But I've never seen it happen before. So it took me a very, very long time to even make up my mind to wow. or even just tell the story. The only thing I did was I took a TV station. Oh. And they aired it on, and at the end of the day, we had kind of, okay, we are and and everything mm. just ended the same way. And when I gave back to my child, because for me, it was traumatic, because every time it was like, I, the whole thing kept playing back in my head. Even even after, like, a year after, that mm. I even gave back to my baby girl, each time I see with my child, I always have this guilt in my heart. Mm. That my child is lucky today. She no, for real, this could this could happen father. to anybody. I mean, and you know, we still did not learn. Um, but even though you were not able to help that boy, there's something that you've been doing, and it's called uh, Don'tWalk.org. You actually started an organization. Can you tell us a little bit about that organization and why you decided to start it, and what you're hoping to get out of it? Basically, Don't Walk Away Just Come was actually the impact just to orient people. Because I, 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 I discovered that most of this, most of this, they're actually being most of this, this actual, they, that's the mindset they have. They need to be reorientated about the whole, the whole thing. And for them to be able to say it, it happened some years after four boys were killed in Potaka. That's so that it's an orientation that is going down in the heads of the people. And the only way is that I feel I can do as a filmmaker is trying to reorientate the people, trying to tell the people, that, look, people always have to walk away from most of these situations. At the end of the day, it's really not going to help. Because the next person that could be, that, that, that could be mobbed could even be your family, to even be one of your relatives. The, the Alu for one of the relatives was actually informed earlier because she had the whole tracker before it escalated. But she ignored. And at the end of the day, our, our brother had to go for it. But if we had one, two, three, four, five people kicking against it, each of these problems will not be able to take control of the situation. If we all have to always walk away and say, oh, it's none of my it's none of my, so the it's the, the main message is for people not to walk away and do something about about this if they see it yes. going on. Okay. Stop it before it starts. Just stop, stop it before it starts. Start. Try I and yes. Yeah. Try and control it before it starts. It escalates. If we have five people, like someone would have been alive. Mm -hmm. Then if we had like about five people saying, no, you can't do this. And I'm just, I'm just wondering, the, the woman in your video at the beginning, was that his mom or? Yes. That was his mom? It looks like she was, yes, was she was, there was, when they were? 
Samuel is treated as a mom and she denied it. Oh, she did. Uh, the boy said that was her mom, that was his mom, I'm sorry, and she denied it? So yeah, she, denied it. she was okay she with them dragging him that. away? Hello? I can hear you. Go on. Hello? Yeah, go ahead. Someone, someone was killed right immediately. She was scared. Because immediately, immediately she said that she was not the mother and they took somewhere away. I saw her move away with some other children. I'm sure at that moment, if she had said, I am Samuel's mother, she would have been killed alongside with the other, with the other siblings. I'm sure oh, she just said that okay, out of so fear. So it's possible he's actually the mom, but she's afraid of being killed. Yes, that, that's, what that's what I feel. That's what I feel. I feel this I feel this, that that is actually the mom. Because I could feel the fear in her. I could see it. Because <sighs> immediately she said, I am not the mother. This boy was born. I see. Um, that is a very difficult thing to try to, you know, ingest that a mom would actually deny his son just because she doesn't want to be killed along with him. I see. So um, let's go back to what we were talking about in terms of Don't Walk Away organizations. Uh, organization, have you guys been able to, what are some of the uh, impacts that you've been making? Have you been able to stop any lynching? Ah, well, basically, we have, we have started doing like orientation in the the people who started trying to reach out people and trying to inform people because a lot of people hear a lot of stuff about lynching, but they don't actually see it happen. Now they saw summer. And now it's really now beginning to show on everybody that we are killing ourselves. We're not killing the people on top. We're killing ourselves. Now, even with the involvement of some of the known faces like Felix, um, Banky W and every one of them being part of, of, of the race. It, it's no more a one man thing. It's now our, our, our responsibility because we can only reorientate, uh, reorientate ourselves. I see you do have some so celebrities I'm sure, I'm sure that are. Friends. You have some celebrities, you have endorsement from celebrities, right? Tell us a bit yes, about we that. Have yeah, basically we spoke with some celebrities because that was actually during the launching of the, the campaign itself. We had uh, people from the government, that from the Shuguluri local government, which actually, where that was where the whole thing happened. We had representatives from the wife of uh, uh, Governor Tinubu, who was actually governor at that time. So, and we had media personalities who were there, who actually created the board around it and we had Banshee W, we had the case show, we had most of these popular yeah. faces saying okay. no because these are people that have become role models to the people. So if they can be able to tell people that look, don't do this and at least somehow they are communicating to their subconscious. So, um, so, <laughs> hello? Yeah, go ahead. So even even if they are even if they're if they are actually trying to do something Somehow they will be communicating with them. Somehow, when they remember that, oh, Kate Ensha says, don't do this. Penny Kuti says, don't do this. Sometimes it really helps. And it really shows that at least we have a lot of support. When we had the likes of Bank EW, we had the likes of Penny, the, almost most of the Hollywood actors were still able to say, yes, they are, they are in support. Of what we are uh, doing. What you're doing. What about the police? Uh, that day, were there no policemen around? And I've had reports that sometimes policemen are actually present when lynching is going on. Is that true? Uh, well, I, I can't really say so much about it for now. I can't really say so much. Anytime when it comes but that to day, did, were there outside, policemen there it. that day? No, there was none. There, went, there, was, there none. was none. Okay. And, you know, if the government could hear you, what would be your message to the Nigerian government? How can the government help in terms of uh, maybe educating people on what to do, what not to do? Or would you want them to criminalize lynching? Or what exactly? How would you want the government to help? The only thing I want the government to do is to reorientate the people. Create mediums whereby people will be reorientated. People who will really need to understand that they don't have to take laws into their hands. 
That's what the government needs to do. If you put a law, there's already a law that has been passed on against lynching. But does the law stop anything? No, it doesn't. So if you can create, like how the news do campaigns, create concerts, do movies, do, do films, do drama plays, and then I talk to the people and say, please, stop this thing. It goes a very, very long way in um, communicating with the people. What about some Nigerians who believe that the policemen are slow or sometimes they can be bribed and there's no justice and a lot of people are getting away with stuff and they feel like they have to take laws in their hands? How do you convince people like that? Well, if you say the policemen are slow, it is not for you to now take somebody's life. It is not, it's not your job. Now, if the policeman is still, uh, we had even with, even with the orientation that we're trying, to, we're actually even talking to the police and trying to tell them this is the way this and because the people are kind, they, 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 they are trying to say they are lost hope. That's why they are taking laws into their hands. But the police now have to now convince us yeah. that they can actually take control. Okay. But not, and I. Thank you very much. Anybody. Thank you very much, Abby. And just my last question is, if someone is watching today and they're wondering how they could help, um, how can people help? And we have your website up the whole time, don'twalkaway.org, but how can ordinary Nigerians, how can we be of help? Well, ordinary Nigerians really actually come in their own way. I just send messages to the website because the website is what we are using to actually send messages to government and every other but you should always be part of send contributions. Let us get to hear from you through that medium. And let's see how we can actually work with this. Basically now I uh, me and Mr. Charles that is actually working with the organization. We're actually in Delta State right now trying to meet with all the editors in Nigeria, trying to still reorientate them and see Keep passing the message. Keep reorientating the people. Whenever you're calling your people at home, try and reorientate them. Try right. and tell them never to take laws into their hands. Thank you very much. Um, viewers, thank you very much, Abimbola. We really um, appreciate having you on the show today. Thank you very much. Uh, viewers, that has been Abimbola Ogunsonya, a Nigerian filmmaker who is doc doing documentaries about you know, issues like lynching in Nigeria. If you have any story of lynching, by the way, please visit his website and tell them your story. Uh, tell them what you know about people doing stuff like this so that they can take actions. Uh, stay tuned. We have more to come, and we'll be right back.